Welcome to Healing America with Dr. Jim White. Jim has been investing, coaching executives, and turning around companies for over 30 years. Now your host, Dr. Jim White. Good evening. This is Jim White, and welcome to Healing America. We have a fantastic guest with us this evening, and we're just going to get right into the show. But before I do that, uh, I, I, I would be remiss if uh, I didn't acknowledge uh, the, 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 the additional uh, toll that the United States is uh, succumbing to for this COVID-19. So uh, you know me by now, the regular uh, viewers, and uh, you know me. Uh, we got to be safe. We got to look out, look after one another, uh, and we got to take all the protection because this thing is not over. So, as I said, get right into the show. We have a fantastic guest this evening, and his name is Tom Day. Uh, Tom is the research director for Five Forks Consulting and a senior consultant for Inturo. I hope I pronounced that right. If I don't, I'll make sure Tom uh, corrects me. Uh, Inturo Consulting. And Tom is an adjunct lecturer at the Harris School for Public Policy at the University of Chicago, where he teaches a graduate level course on regional innovation, get that, regional innovation and strategies and how research and technology support regional economic growth. That alone, we could do a hour show on. So I'm going to be very interested in maybe talking more about that as we move to the show, if not another time. Tom is a, an Iraq war veteran. He served in Iraq with the Army's 101st Airborne Division in 2003, 2004. He was also bureau correspondent in Afghanistan for McClaskey newspaper in 2009, 2010. And he currently serves as the Illinois State Director of the Democratic Party Veterans and Military Families Council. Is a lot of you know, I am also a Vietnam uh, a veteran of the Vietnam uh, uh, conflict, and uh, I want to welcome Tom to the uh, to the program by saying thank you for your service, Tom, and it is a pleasure to have you this evening. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you for your service, Doctor. You welcome, sir. I tell you, it's uh, it, it, it. Sometimes we look back, and just before we we went on air, we were talking briefly. And uh, you look in 2003, that's, that's been a long time. And I look at my service in 68, 69, and 70. And the uh, uh, only thing that that tells people, I'm just getting old. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> well, some of us Iraq and Afghanistan guys are getting some gray hairs, too. <laughs> you, 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 you certainly are. So, again, thank you for your uh, service, Tom, and uh, what you continue to do to support veterans. Uh, it, uh, it, it's just absolutely uh, impressive. If you don't mind, I'm just going to jump right into right right into it uh, this evening, and uh, uh, you know, with our political environment, I got to ask, share your perspective on the state of the current current affairs. I'm just we're just going to jump right into it, and we'll have a conversation and uh, any area that uh, you you want to go. But uh, I, from a from, from a veteran and from a uh, journalist, uh, what's your perspective on the state of the current politics today? Well, we're obviously in a very, uh, very high risk uh, time in American history. Uh, you know, we have a political environment that, in my judgment, has been inflamed by not. It's just it's too simple to say by Trump. Okay, what uh, Donald Trump represents is something far deeper that that we need to understand we need to uncover why it is that this man reached the highest office of our country why it is that you know some 40 percent of the country even even through the embrace of white nationalists and neo-nazis even through the incompetence and the corruption even through the 200,000 people who have lost their lives as this man lied about what he knew about this virus. And we know that through the Bob Woodward tapes. 
And why why is it that we, this man still has this this foundation of support? Uh, you know, uh, uh, even through the economic uh, destruction that has that has happened over the past seven months. And when you you think a little deeper, you, you know, and the name of your book is Broken America. Mm-hmm. You can. Uh, you are urged, you are you are called to think about what fundamentally has gone wrong, and it it long predates November two thousand and sixteen when when Donald Trump is elected. I mean, we have a we have a national economy that no longer works for for middle class people, and you know they families see that you know uh, that that their kids are no longer entering a workforce where they can do better than the previous generation. And, and of course, we have this long standing structural racism that has weighed this country down for, for since our founding, that now, right now, we need to deal with it. And if we don't address all of these structural challenges that we have as a country, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it would certainly appear that Donald Trump is not going to be reelected in six weeks. But someone like him may rise to the surface again in three or four years. And that person may be even more cunning even wiser mm-hmm. and even more destructive mm-hmm. and 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 that is why you know it's so important that even you know, let me make it personal here that's why it's so important that military veterans leave this conversation in my judgment so yeah. we can you know when we have a commander in chief who calls us suckers and losers yeah you know, that's a challenge to us to say, you know, this isn't who we are. This isn't who we are as a country. It's not the that doesn't. This isn't the, these aren't the values that so many men and women in your generation and generations before that, in generate in the generation that uh, I'm so proud to be a part of, the generation of Iraq and Afghanistan war events. You know, that's not that's not who we are. And, and we got to get back. Well, let me rephrase this. We got we to gotta understand what our founding documents call us to do and the values they represent. But we have to go even further than that. Because, you know, when our founding documents were written, they didn't apply to slaves that we captured and brought to our homeland. They didn't apply to women. And there is an inherent goodness in our founding documents that we need to make sure that they that applies to each and every single one of us. And that's that's what I hope you know we collectively do in six weeks, but even further beyond that. I, I agree with uh, your assessment, Tom, and I especially agree when you say the veterans, the veterans, it must be, in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase, must be in this game. And you, you touched on a question that I was going to uh, ask, and uh, that was when you heard the commander in chief stand at the platform, and make reference or not make reference. I should I, I'd be more direct than that. And when he called service members suckers, the emotion that you felt at that time, if you could recall it, and it yeah. you can, can you share that emotion? And uh, if you don't mind, once I hear that uh, with all of our viewers, uh, I've, I've had a lot of discussion over previous weeks since that day. And uh, I, I would love to know, as a uh, Iraqi veteran, knowing the sacrifices that your generation 
made. What was the emotion when you heard that? It was deeply personal. I was very emotional. I wept a bit. And I, 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 that seems melodramatic, but let me explain to you why it was that I had such uh, a visceral reaction. And that is that you know, no, no veteran is a loser. Right. But, but let me say this, a whole lot of us come from very different backgrounds than growing up as the favorite son of a successful real estate developer in New York and going to schools like the University of Pennsylvania. And I heard that disdain for people who come from less disadvantaged backgrounds. Frankly, I did. Coming from a man who you know, inherited hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't know the exact figure. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, live the life he has lived. And understand that, you know, not only me, you know, a humble kid who grew up in rural Pennsylvania and, you know, went to public schools and, you know, I had, I had a number of privileges, at least of, not the least of which is that I'm a white man. Right. But right. so many of all the, the other folks I served with, well, number one, you know, I think some 40 percent are people of color. That should be noted. Uh, but so many of us come from south side of Chicago, towns like Altoona, Pennsylvania, where my mom grew up, the blue collar old rail town. Yeah. Towns and environments that scarcely look like the environment he grew up in. And to be called a loser, frankly, it confirmed what I long suspected his view to be of people yeah. like me. And, um, you know, and, and to extend those views to people who gave their life to defend this country, I, I, I think, uh, let, me, let me wrap my thoughts with this. And that is that if there's one thing that I have always credited the other folks on the other side of the aisle and people who view things differently than I do. What a beautiful <laughs> thing that is in the back. Yeah, yeah. They love vets, okay? Or at least they told me, <laughs> right? They put they slapped the bumper sticker on their car. You well, know, um, they gave us free meals you know, on Veterans Day, and and yet I'm confused why or how they reconcile their admiration for our men and women in uniform and our veterans with voting to reelect somebody to be commander in chief right. who views our men and women in uniform and our veterans the way he does. Right. It, cannot, it cannot be reconciled. So what was it you were, ex you were expressing all those years ago when, you know, I would walk through an airport and people would try to buy me a beer, or buy me coffee, buy me lunch. Yeah. You know, what, what you, what, do you do you really feel the way you think or you tell folks you feel about veterans if you do not see the contradiction in voting for somebody to be commander in chief who thinks we're losers and suffering and 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 also who thinks who who has not defended our men and women who are in combat right now right. from attacks being paid for by the Russian government right Right, right. And, and this moves beyond politics, okay? Like, uh, this is beyond politics. If Barack Obama, and he never would, but if Barack Obama in 2012 said vets and, and service members are losing suckers, you better believe I would have voted for Mitt Romney. And right. I would have been smiling doing it, but I absolutely would have. Yeah. I, just, I don't understand why partisanship 
and I'll be candid with you, why partisanship on one side has has warped our view of our values and our respect for our country the way it obviously has. Yeah, yeah. If I may, and uh, I can tell it's it's I mean, it's extremely emotional. And and if I may, I'll just take a moment. And when I heard those comments, I like you was deeply hurt. And I served over 50 years ago. And, uh, and, and I did two tours in Vietnam. I'm a disabled, have a disability, but I'm one of the best, best people that I have all the body parts, but there's not a day that goes by. There's not some pain. And, and I like you shared a few tears the emotion and the disappointment of our commander in chief to know that he is so disconnected. He has no point of reference as to what our American men and women in uniform, the sacrifice that they give. And for, for that, at that moment, even, even though I've never been a, I've never been a supporter of Donald Trump, even when he's in private sector, because in, in my business uh, over the years, there's been some interchange there with some of his enterprises. I know the type of man he is and that he's dishonest. And you, in your opening, in, in our opening, I should say, you were talking about that we, we got a deeper problem in America where we have 40% of, of, of our American citizens that actually believe what Donald Trump is saying. That is concerning. And, uh, and, and when did it start? How did it start? What are we going to do? And I, like you, am going to do everything that I possibly can to make sure that he does not return to that office in January the 20th of 2021. It would be a devastation to our, our our country so the emotion and the uh the, the the pain and can you imagine tom if you if you'd woke up and you're you're in iraq and you're in the 101st it's a very prestigious uh, unit uh over history 101st airborne and if you'd woke up and you're turned on and you saw the commander in chief and you're standing there in uniform. And I'm going to use the word, let's say you're outside the wire, you come by and, uh, and, and to hear your commander in chief, well, well, what's that? What's, what's that? What is the morale going to be right? Sure. Uh, of, 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 of our men and women, uh, in, in uniform to me, it's a disgrace. I, I think it's going to be a tremendous, uh, uh, black eye on our history for years to come. Um, so thank you for that. And, and if I may, uh, let me transition into, you were also a journalist, uh, mm -hmm. heard of time in Afghanistan. Yeah, I, I was uh, a bureau reporter. So let me, it was a tough time for journalism. Not that they're any better now. This is right after the financial market cla uh, collapsed. Um, I couldn't get a job for like seven, eight months, freelancing, whatever I could, at this, right. you know, um, and, uh, and I get, I found a gig working for the Macon Telegraph in Georgia. And, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it made some great friends down there. Uh, went to a few Georgia Bulldogs games, you know, um, I, I didn't particularly have a great desire to stay there, but, um, but part of the gig was that, uh, you know, it was owned by the McClatchy newspapers and uh, there was a Georgia unit there and I convinced my editor and then the editors in DC to let me go to Afghanistan to cover them. And uh, oh, uh, I was stationed in, uh, in Kabul, the capital of uh, Afghanistan and Coast Province, which is on the uh, Pakistani Afghan border at the time, that was a real hot spot uh, for you know Taliban fighters coming in through uh, what was perceived to be accurately, I'm sure, a, uh, a safe haven for them. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, told some great stories and uh, you know, I've, I've since kind of freelanced some opinions and some analytical pieces, uh, some related to defense and technology and, and veterans issues. I, I tell you, 
Ma Macon Calgary, been a Georgia boy, and I'm going to forgive you for going to the Georgia Bulldogs game. Oh. I'm a Georgia Tech guy. Okay, I'm a Georgia Tech guy. So we go, we're gonna we'll, we'll we'll overlook that. Those well, I grew up in State College, Pennsylvania, and went to Penn State. I'm a big Penn State guy, but I I didn't adopt the Georgia Dogs uh, for the time up there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, I, I find that fascinating uh, because you were in Iraq. Uh, uh, doing whatever you need to do to try to put food on the table and find this gig at the Macon Telegraph, convince, convince uh, the locals and bureau chief, to, let me go to Afghanistan to report. I find that fascinating. I find that fascinating. Well, and, and, and my, my beat, they call it, uh, was to cover Robbins Air Force Base. Yeah. And, you know, when we were, we were off camera, Jim, you and I talked yeah. about base realignment and closure in the 1990s. Right. It, right. it was it was fascinating to see that community on a hair trigger about, you know, whenever the topic of base realignment and closure was elevated, uh, they, they were always concerned that Robbins Air Force Base would be on the chopping block. And, right. and I, I don't know if, I mean, we haven't done a round of BRAC since, so, you know, it's been some 10 years since I worked for the Telegraph. They haven't, uh, I mean, obviously Robbins has survived up to now, but we'll see if you know the new. If there's a new administration, if that's a topic that uh, they will want to uh, revisit. I know the Air Force and the Department of Defense has screamed from the top of their lungs. They got too much land. They got to get rid of some, you know, some twenty percent of right. the land that they hold is not needed. So uh, they will be, I'm sure, eager to revisit base realignment closure. But it's never that easy, as you are well aware. It, 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 it's not that easy. And as you said, we've talked off camera that I was fortunate enough that uh, ex Secretary Panetta uh, had endorsed the book, broke, you know, broke, broken America. This this little piece right here. And uh, which I was so thankful for. And uh, that's how we met, uh, was in the early 90s uh, under the uh, base closure when they closed Fort Ord in, in Monterey County, out in the seaside, Monterey County. Uh, so, uh, and, and I would say today, uh, I think it was what, 92, 93, 94 in that area. Uh, and they're still trying to get it right, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're still trying to get it right. Um, uh, let me ask you this. What do you believe the average citizen can do to heal our broken America? What can I ask? What, 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 in your opinion, what can the average citizen do? Well, we gotta, we've got to like Joe Biden in six weeks. And is Joe Biden perfect? No, no, he's not. Agreed. But, um, you know, that's that's the first step, and yeah, you know, there's going to be a fight over this open Supreme Court uh, uh, vacancy that is going to extend into a new administration, even if uh, Trump is able to to uh, place his nominee on the court. There will be tremendous pressure to add additional seats. And that is going to infer and uh, further inflame tensions between the two sides of the aisle. But you know, we are a changing country. We are a, a rapidly, and I mean this statistically speaking. So, you know, um, twenty, thirty years ago, we were not nearly as diverse as we are now. In thirty or uh, twenty, twenty-five years, I believe. We are going to be majority minority. That is, that is a wonderful news for our country. We should celebrate the diversity that is not only the very uh, fabric of our country, but but is it is is increasing and continuing to enrich our country, and ensure that we are elevating the voices and the views of people who have been marginalized for far, far too long. And, you know, when after the killing of George Floyd, you know, I, I, I was confronted with the reality that I hadn't done enough to understand, you know, why is it that men and women of color 
you know, when they're pulled over by police are being taught from a young age to put their hands at the ten of the two. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, but more than that, you know, why is it that women make, you know, 72, 73 cents for every dollar a man makes, you know, this is no longer sustainable and we can no longer tolerate. So if we're going to heal our country, we need to be much more empathetic and sympathetic to the struggles of, of folks who, you know, talking as a white man here, who don't look like me. And, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, I, that's a mandate that I, I hold very dearly. I'm going to, you know, I'm a, I have resolved to do better. And I hope others watching do the same, especially, frankly, for the white folks. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and you and I know this because we served with so many men and women of color. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we, we owe it to the men and women of color that we served with to spend some time reading about their challenges and thinking about how we can support them. That's how I think yeah. we can be right. our yeah. right. um, You are a treasure, sir. I, I hope Thanks, sir. And, uh, I hope you'll come back uh, maybe after the election. I, I would love to. I, 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 I love your insights. Uh, uh, the time goes way too fast on, 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 on these programs, but uh, you are a treasure. So, and the moments, uh, the minutes we have uh, left remaining, what's the future uh, for, for Tom? And, 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 and if you think, uh, if you're not thinking politics, uh, maybe I'll suggest that one day and you got my vote already on the vote. So what's the, what's the future for, uh, for, for Tom? Well, actually, I, I ran for office a few years ago and got what it was uh, an ill-advised uh, run candidly. Uh, what's the future for me? Uh, I'm a father now and a husband. When I ran the first time, I was neither. And, you know, I don't know how many folks are open about this who have run for office, but, you know, um, I, I think for the majority of us, you, you run for office, yes, to serve, but also out of a sense that, you know, you have a limited time on this planet and, you know, you want to leave a legacy. And, you know, to me, my legacy is in the other room. My son, Alec, he's uh, 22 months old. And that's more than good enough. Yeah. But on top of that, you know, I, I, I love teaching. You know, I, you mentioned the class I teach. Uh, uh, you know, that's something I want to continue doing. You know, I've authored opinions um, about, you know, how to strength recently how to strengthen our national security through our national defense and technology industries. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, if, if I'm called to run for office, and I mean that, like, if somebody calls me and says, okay, we got to, we have this open seat, you are perfect for it. Mm -hmm. Go out there and get it. Then yeah, sure. Maybe I'll give it some consideration. But in the meantime, I'm just going to try to be the best dad and the best teacher and the best consultant I can be. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a that's a good future. That's a good future. Tom, how can people uh, reach out to you if they'd like to connect with you and learn more about your work? Yeah. Uh, well, my Twitter handle is Thomas L. Day. Thomas spelled normally L. My middle initial Lee is my middle name, Day. Uh, that's maybe a great place to start. Tweet at me. I'll tweet at you back. Yeah, I'm on social media, uh, uh, you know, um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, just shoot me a note. I'm happy to happy to an answer any questions you have about anything we've talked about on this program. And um, you know, I suspect a lot of your folks who watch are themselves military veterans. And and if so, you know, we're family. And uh, you know, um, I hope I shared some insight that can benefit whatever you're doing. Okay. I can assure you did. Tom, thank you so much, and thank you for your time, and 
I hope to see you back on the show. Well, after the election, just make a point. I'd like to uh, sit down and uh, get a bit more time to drill into that. So thank you, sir. And you have a good evening. And, uh, and, and thank you for your time. Doctor, thank you so much. I really My pleasure. Okay, that's Tom Day. Uh, what a fascinating story! What a, what 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 a, what, a, what a great man he is! And uh, once again, I want to thank him for his service. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to have uh, Baxter Sweeley, the former candidate for lieutenant governor of Illinois, is going to join us. We're going to contend, uh, continue our discussion. And uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for uh, uh, for. Uh, Support us, Broken America. Uh, our goal is to get a copy of this in the hands of every American and every politician uh, specifically. And I also want to share this. I have a friend of mine uh, that I've known for a number of years. Uh, her name is uh, Janet, Janet Atwood. And uh, Janet is the most enthusiastic, uh, the most high energy a uh, person with one mission, and that is to help people's uh, lives to become better tomorrow, and especially uh, women. She is launching a new program called Sisterhood Planet. A Sisterhood Planet, and knowing uh, Janet, uh, so she's contagious. So uh, I, I want you to check it out, uh, take a look at it, and I think we're showing uh, an image on, on the screen. Uh, so uh, sisterhoodplanet.com. So go take a look at it and support Janet and her great work. So I want to thank you for this evening, uh, for all your, uh, all, all your participation, all your feedback. Uh, I, I love coming together every, every Tuesday evening and just having a conversation. And I hope you're enjoying these sessions that we're doing. So at that, I want to say thank you. I want to say, uh, please, uh, please be, be safe. Wear a mask, it's not too much to ask. Wash your hands and social distance. We have got to stop this, this terrible, terrible virus. Over 200,000 Americans have lost their lives to this. And our current president, not sure how he sleeps at night. So once again, we got what, 41 days, 42 days, November the 3rd. We got to turn out, we got to turn out, we got to send a resounding message that Donald Trump is defeated. So do everything you can to support Joe Biden and his administration. Until next week, thank you for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you for your participation and interest in Healing America with Dr. Jim White. To stay in touch with Jim, go to www.healingamericawithdrjimwhite.com.